C and I made a video explaining the genetics involving Lisi and Lewis. Why don't we go into cat genetics in general? I mean, there's so much more when it comes to colors and patterns. I even get questions concerning people's pet cats and their colors. So why don't we get into more of the details of my other OCs, which are all naturally designed? It's education time! Woo! But first, we need to understand more of the genetics behind the color of a cat. So I'm going to go into more detail than I did with my previous video, so I may repeat myself um, if you've watched the original video, but you're going to get a lot of details. But you may want to pause the video occasionally to process the information, because yeah, we're, we're going deep. So first of all, we need to understand what dominant and recessive traits are. The term dominant and recessive traits describe the inherited patterns of certain traits. They describe how likely it is for a certain phenotype, which means observable characteristic of an individual, to pass from parent to offspring. People and animals have two copies of each gene. The two copies, called alleles, can be different from each other depending on the variation of the proteins. A dominant allele produces a dominant phenotype in individuals who have one copy of the, of the allele. For a recessive allele to produce a recessive phenotype, the individual must have two copies, one from each parent. An individual with one in dominant and one recessive allele for a gene will have a dominant phenotype. They are called carriers of the recessive allele, which means the recessive allele is present but does not show. There are names for those with two dominant alleles and two recessive alleles. That is called homozygous, which means they are one of each. However, with one dominant allele and one recessive allele, it's called heterozygous because it's mixed. Confused? <laughs> I know, I was confused when I took this in biology back in school. Like, six years ago. Maybe seven. Let's look into a relatable context with, say, human hair. This is a punt square. This helps us determine the likelihood of an offspring of two parents to have certain traits. Individuals always have two alleles. Gender, they only have one. And we'll go into that later, of course. Let's use the letters H to represent the hair color alleles. Dark hair is dominant to light hair. So, for this example, let's say both parents have dark hair. This means that they are either big H, big H, or big H, little H. Whenever they, there is a capital letter, the dominant allele, it means the dominant trait shows through. And if you remember, the presence of a little h means that the individual is a carrier of light hair. So if one parent has big H, big H, and the other has big H, little h, the results will show that the offspring of the two parents will either be 50% big H, big H, or 50% big H, little h which means that the child will either be 50% completely dark hair dominant or 50% dark hair dominant while carrying the light hair trait. So if we replace the big H, little H with little H, little H, this means one of the parents has light hair. So when we pair a big H, big H with little H, little H, it shows that 100% of the offspring will be dark hair dominant but carry the light hair trait. When we have parents with both big H, little h, this can create some interesting results. The results would be 25% dominant dark hair with big H, big H, 50% dominant dark hair and light hair carrier, and 25% light hair. And when the one parent is big H, little h, and the other is little h, little h, this produces offspring with 50% dominant dark hair and what being a carrier, and 50% light hair. And when both parents are both little h, little h, 100% of the offspring will have light hair. So, now that you sort of understand how this part of genetics works, let's look into a cat's makeup. In my previous video, I used the colors orange and black. Orange and black both happen to be dominant cat colors. Two other colors I did not include in the previous video are chocolate and cinnamon. 
chocolate and cinnamon are actually mutations in the black gene. But, but, but wait, wait, wait. Mutations? Well, how does that work? Well, a mutated gene is a permanent alteration in DNA that makes up a gene. When we go back to the hair example, red hair is the result of a mutation, as well as green eyes. Despite chocolate and cinnamon being mutations, they are still dominant as they come from the black gene. But if there's a dominant gene, then what are the recessive genes? Remember how dark hair was dominant to light hair? Well, it works the same way with cats, but they are called dilutions. In case you don't know what a dilution is, a dilution is the process of reducing the concentration of color in the fur, making it lighter. Diluted black is gray, or in this case we'll call it blue. Diluted chocolate is called lilac, diluted cinnamon is called fawn, and diluted orange is called cream. Now, cat colors can get pretty confusing, so you may be thinking, would these dominant genes conflict with each other? What happens if a black cat and a chocolate cat mate? What will their offspring look like? Since chocolate and cinnamon are mutations of black, it means that black is dominant to chocolate and cinnamon, and chocolate is dominant to cinnamon. That means if a black cat and a chocolate cat mated, their offspring would be black, but be carriers of chocolate. And the results would be the same if a black cat mated with a cinnamon cat, or a chocolate cat mated with a cinnamon cat. And the same goes to the diluted genes. Blue is dominant to lilac and fawn, and lilac is dominant to fawn. But all these three dilutions are recessive of the original colors. And what about orange? Well, orange trumps all, as orange is dominant to black, so that it also means cream is dominant to blue. So what would their alleles look like? Black will always have at least one dominant allele. So let's use the letter B. Black will always be your big B, big B. Brown is recessive to black, so its allele would look like little b, little b. And what about cinnamon? We can't go lower than a lowercase letter, so instead let's just use little b1, little b1. Orange has much less variation, so let's just use the letter O. A capital O means there is orange, and a little o means there is no orange. And when we use diluted colors, we will use the letter D for diluted. A big D, big D means there are no traits of dilution. A big D, little d means that the cat is a carrier. And little d, little d means the cat is a dilute of its original color. Confused? Well, before I can show any example, I shall repeat what I said in my original video. Everyone who reproduces sexually has chromosomes that create genders. The male chromosome is XY and the female chromosome is XX. The female always carries an X chromosome while the male can contribute either X or Y, which is how genders are produced. And like I said in the previous video, the X chromosome carries on the colors. So males only can carry on one color trait, while females can carry two. This means that the female can display both orange and black, hence the tortoise shell. Now, let's look at an example. Let's use the example of an orange tom and a black queen. Let's say none of them carry any chocolate or cinnamon, and the Tom is a carrier of the dilution gene. So the Tom's genotype would look like big O, big B, big B, big D, little d, while the Queen's genotype is little O, big B, big B, big D, big D. Though it looks confusing, the Punnett square is remarkably small. Our result would be 50% little o, big o, big b, big b, big d, big d, and 50% little o, big o, big b, big b, big d, little d. Phew! So what does that mean for offspring? Remember, colors are sex-linked traits. That means that the males will always be black. But what about orange being dominant to black? The only way a Tom's color can be carried on is through the X chromosome, which males can deliver either X or Y, and the Y chromosome does not carry the color trait, while the queen only carries the X, which she would be black. Therefore, any male offspring a queen delivers will inherit her coloring. However, 
all females would be tortoise shell since the red tom gives a red X chromosome and the black queen gives a black X chromosome. So the orange and black colors come through in patches. Both genders have a 50% chance of carrying the dilution gene. Let's go a little bit into the tortoise shell again. A typical tortoise shell is a patchwork of black and orange in random patterns. The tortoise shell can be modified by dilution, resulting in blue and cream rather than black and orange. It is also possible to see a chocolate or cinnamon torty using the similar genotype we used before. And if the dilution is present in both parents, a lilac cream and fawn cream torty can be present. So then what would happen if, say, a tom of any color were to mate with a tortoise shell of any color? What would the offspring look like, especially males? I guess for this example, let's use a blue male with a black and orange torty. The Tom's genotype would look like little O, little O, big B, big B, little D, little D, as blue is the dilution of black. And the Queen's genotype would look like little O, big O, big B, big B, big D, big D. Let's say she doesn't carry any dilution. When we put it in our Punnett square, we get two results. We get 50% little O, little O, big B, big B, big D, little D, and 50% little o, big o, big b, big b, big d, little d. As for gender, this means any males can have a 50% chance of being black and 50% chance of being orange. But why aren't any of the offspring blue like their father? The Tom still has a big b, big b in his genotype. It's the little d, little d that determines his dilution. And since the queen has no dilution, the black is dominant to blue. The offspring becoming black. And the males can be either black or orange because the female can contribute both a black X chromosome or an orange X chromosome since she has two. And since a male needs a Y chromosome to be male, he's dependent on his one X chromosome for color, which the queen always has. As for females, they have a 50% chance of being all black and 50% chance of being a torty. A black female is made by one of the female's black X chromosome and the blue Tom's X chromosome. The torty female is the result of having an orange X chromosome from the queen and a black X chromosome from the blue Tom. However, because the offspring's father was blue, the offspring are all carriers of the dilution gene, which they could possibly pass down to their offspring. Orange, cream, black, blue, chocolate, lilac, cinnamon, and fawn are the common colors of cats who reside in Europe and in the Western Hemisphere. However, there are even more mutations that have been introduced with the Siamese and Burmese cats of Asia. The Burmese carries the gene for sepia, and the Siamese carries the gene for the pointed color. These are alleles at the albino level, which they are combined. And when they are combined, mink colors are produced, as seen in the Tonkinese breed. And this chart here shows how the western colors can mix with the eastern mutations. I have linked pictures to show you exactly how it all works, but that's not even it. There are e even more mutations that are in the albino section. But I think for now we need to take a break. That's a lot to take in. And this is only part one of genetics. In part two, we review albinism and how white marks and white cats are created, as well as go into the genetics of the tabby patterns. I hope to see you there, and I hope you've learned a lot in this part one of cat genetics.